The director Paul Verhoeven is certainly no stranger to satire. His breakout hit Robocop examined the dangers of corporate fascism through the lens of an ultraviolent action thriller. With Starship Troopers, Verhoeven would up the ante on poking fun at fascism run amok, again using an action thriller as a backdrop. Starship Troopers is about an interplanetary war between Earth and a neighboring planet containing hostile insect-like creatures. No stranger to war-torn circumstances, Verhoeven's childhood was spent living next to the German headquarters in the Netherlands during World War II. This area was repeatedly bombed by Allied forces, and his parents were nearly killed during one such incident. His early memories were of violence and dead bodies. Verhoeven never forgot these traumatic events and utilized these memories in his later films. But more intriguing is the fact that Verhoeven stated that these things excited him as a child, and it's not hard to glean this from his more absurdly violent, over-the-top and thrilling action films. Starship Troopers is the culmination of Verhoeven's desire to hold a mirror up to the society he was critiquing. He seemed to get a lot of joy out of presenting audiences with excessive versions of what they craved, but would never openly admit sex and ultraviolence. At what point would audiences recoil at their own bloodlust? Starship Troopers was Verhoeven's attempt to answer this. The film's intentions can probably be best understood through the main character of Johnny Rico. Rico is almost the perfect specimen. Attractive, chiseled features, perfect physique. He has everything going for him in the looks department, but he essentially has no control over his circumstances. Everything he does is the result of an outside party. He signs up for the infantry because of Carmen. He stays and fights because his family is wiped out. He even has sex because his commanding officer orders him to. And this same man orders him to shoot him later on. He tracks the brain bug because Carl telepathically shows him the way. And by the end, he is mimicking his commanding officer by repeating the same words spoken to him earlier in the film. Rico is essentially a programmed robot with no humanity used as a tool of the fascist regime which employs him. This, of course, can also be seen in Verhoeven's 1987 masterpiece Robocop. Another movie where a brainwashed lackey is manipulated into performing the bidding of a fascist corporate regime. The satirical, comedic media news breaks in that film are taken a step further in Starship Troopers, in the form of a pitch-perfect corporate spokesperson who gives updates on the status of the bug empire, the stakes humanity face in their fight against them, and various advertisements promoting the values of the fascist regime at the heart of the film. These media breaks are a big hint at Verhoeven's satirical intentions. The brilliance of Starship Troopers is that it's not a movie about fascism. It's a movie made from the perspective of a fascist society. It's a movie they would make to show their own citizens in order to promote their cause, to show that what they're doing is right. It's a movie about propaganda through the eyes of a propagandist regime. Not because propaganda is good, but because Verhoeven is holding a mirror up to a society that can't seem to recognize how close they are to becoming a fascist culture themselves. He is essentially more interested in how these people think, rather than trying to damn them or shame them. In this way, Starship Troopers is a lot more fascinating than almost any other major studio film made in the 90s. I'd even go as far as to say that it's arguably the most interesting major studio film ever made. This single-minded approach is exemplified in the movie's casting. Like Johnny Rico, the supporting cast is made up of beautiful, physically idealized specimens. They are perfect to the point of absurdity. The casting was another one of Verhoeven's attempts at satire, taking a cue from Nazi Germany's obsession with curating the perfect Aryan race. These aren't the characters of a war movie. They're the characters that a fascist society would cast in order to promote the kind of idealized person their audience would want to emulate. It's a commercial for the military of the future, and just like corporations who use beautiful people to sell their products, the Federation uses beautiful people to sell their way of life. A modern Hollywood version of this would completely miss the point, and probably involve characters trying to resist and break out of their fascist programming, stepping behind the curtain as it were and pulling it back to expose what's behind it. That approach is entirely predictable and something Verhoeven isn't interested in. 
Instead, he takes the approach of criticizing fascism by diving headfirst into its center, reveling in its over-the-top cheese, absurdity, and the character's unblinking dedication to their governmental overlords. No studio today would ever greenlight a movie with such an unapologetic, single-minded approach. Today's toxic social media culture would tear it to shreds, reading everything on a surface level, missing the point entirely, and falling into the same trap as the film's characters. People who have almost no self-awareness and just follow the accepted cultural norms that have shaped their entire worldview. In the end, Starship Troopers is probably the bravest movie of Verhoeven's career. He had to risk pissing off movie fans and reviewers and being accused of making a cheesy, badly acted film in order to get his point across. Verhoeven's point was that the over-the-top acting in cheese is exactly the point. This is the kind of content fascist societies depend on to promote their ideals. Awful, stomach-churning violence being committed by pretty, idealized people full of youth and vigor and with no self-awareness, sacrificing themselves for a cause greater than themselves without hesitation. Verhoeven's satirical masterpiece was far too smart for general audiences and critics who were confused by the film and dismissed it for all the reasons that make it brilliant. But the beauty of cinema is that movies can have a life beyond the demands of opening weekend box office, take on a life of their own, and eventually find an audience with enough taste to appreciate it. Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone really has. Use that freedom. Make up your own mind, Rico. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe button as I'll be posting more content in the future. Thanks for watching.